you, you obviously were very receptive to what Chris Ash brought to the table, et cetera, when he came in here two years ago and stuff. How does that, how does that dynamic work in y'all's room from the standpoint of uh, generating a defense? Well, I think that's one of the, I think, the strengths of what I do and the strengths of what we do here. Um, your ability to work and adapt and uh, with everybody. Um, so you know, again, he, we haven't been in there a whole lot together, yeah. um, but it's been like that since I've been here. You know, all the way back to my first job here, uh, Mark D'Antonio. I mean, it was it was a collaborative effort. Uh, then they went to Mel Tucker and Mark, and Mark Snyder, um, and then for five years, six years, it was Jim Haycock and myself. Um, and, and I don't mean just us. There was a lot of other people yeah. that were part of those things. Yeah. That's the way I've been brought up. That's the way. Uh, you know, ever since I started coaching, coming here, obviously with Coach Tress and, and throughout the entire rest of the, the group, uh, your ability to work together, uh, adapt, um, and, and grow. And I think the greatest thing for me is a lot of these guys, you know, Chris, a lot, a lot of guys have had to go around the entire country to, to get experiences from different head coaches and different things. Um, <laughs> one of the fortunate things for me is I, I've been fortunate enough not to have to move my family and the ability to, to be under different head coaches all the way back from playing for John Cooper and GA and for John Cooper. Um, to, to working for Jim Trestle, to working for Urban Meyer, uh, to having a bunch of different guys that have come here, uh, given me the ability to learn. And this is a, this is another opportunity for me um, to not have to move my family and to learn from from the best. What do you expect, Greg? I mean, you, you know of Greg, you've known of him for a while. What do you expect he will bring more than anything else, to, new, so to speak, or refreshing to the to, to the table? I don't, I, to be honest with you, I don't know. I mean, I, again, we haven't talked nearly as much of true philosophies and different things. Um, I know he brings a lot of different things to us as a, as a program, too, to, to Coach Meyer. You know, mm -hmm. being a head coach, um, not just in college, but in the NFL, um, brings a lot to our guys. The, the perspective on, on guys that can truly talk about the NFL and, and, and what it has to offer and the different dynamics of that league, um, as well as obviously defensively a lot to our room. To me personally, a lot, too. There's a guy that's been a head coach for 13, 14 years. Um, has run the game and have done a lot of different things. So um, that's what I'm looking forward to. Hey, one other quick thing. Uh, uh, Brian Kelly said the other day uh, he thinks their philosophy and, and Ohio State's offensive philosophy are very similar. It's just they want to throw the ball more and stuff. When you watch them on video, do you see a little bit of that? I mean, what do, what do you notice about them from an offensive standpoint, Notre Dame? Yeah, I would say uh, – Probably for us, this is one of the more similar games that we've had to, to what our offense does. Huh. Um, their ability to not just, to, I mean, they're still, they, they still run the ball and run the ball very well. They'll run the quarterback as well. Yeah. Um, so they, they do a lot of the similar things. You, truly, they might um, line up and empty a little bit more, and they might truly drop back pass a little bit more maybe um, at times than our offense does. But the reality is it's, it's a similar type of offense, uh, focused around obviously a great offensive line, uh, a quarterback that manages the game very well, can do it all, can throw the ball, can run the ball. Um, you know, obviously with some great talent on the outside. Thanks, man. Hey, Luke, you've, Urban always talks about creating alignment on a staff. And you've been a frontline soldier in, in that for maybe longer than anyone else. I mean, you know more about it. What have you learned? <laughs> that together everyone achieves more. Uh, the same thing it says in the back of our T-shirts that we give to our guys for the silver bullets. Um, you know, we have, we have a saying around here, the power of the unit. And sometimes you have four separate units, but when we come together as a team and as a defense, that's four units coming together as one. And our whole motto is team is together everyone achieves more. And you can't preach that to your players. You can't preach that every single day to, to your guys um, and then not live it your same. Uh, so I think that's one of the great things about what it is that we've done. Um, there's nobody above anybody else. Um, we don't. We ask our guys to be unselfish and care about their teammates every bit as much as themselves. Uh, so we got to be the greatest examples of that. I think in the spring at the coaches' clinic, you talked about the importance of maintaining kind of the fundamentals and believing in what you were doing being a big difference between 13 and 14. And with the defense kind of continuing on that trajectory, I wonder, did you feel like you kind of followed up that way, the way you wanted to with that? As we continue to do what we're doing, yes. It's, you know, I think that's what you really see. Um, you know, the progression of everything that we've done. Um, if you really look to me, the number one most important statistic, obviously, the number one thing is wins. Um, but as the number, the next probably most important statistic defensively is scoring. And if you really look at us right now, we're second in the, in the country in scoring defense. I think nine points behind Wisconsin. Um, so what, what does that mean? That, that we've had consistency in what we've done from, from year one or two years ago, continue to battle through to the, to the, to the things we've done this year, enhanced it, gotten better. Um, and when you've got great players, you know, you got a chance to be successful when you, have, uh, when you have consistency in what you're doing. Do you think the turnovers and the defensive touchdowns, were, I mean, is that something that sort of becomes a, uh, a result of, of all that stuff? Too? It's a result of great effort. You know, we can, you know, 
you can ask about well, what do you have some specific turnover drill do you do you, you know strip drills different things that you do no I mean we truly believe deep down inside that turnovers come from great effort um, obviously there's other things that, that go along with them but um, when you're flying to the football when the ball's on the ground the ball's in the air uh, you truly believe it's yours you, you have an opportunity to make a lot of those things happen you have probably some I know there's another game but you're going to lose at least one of your linebackers I wonder what you're looking at with your younger guys what kind of year they've had uh, good I mean a lot of them don't know much because they haven't been out there in the you know, played in front of the lights uh, nearly as much, but uh, I think we got great depth, and that's probably the thing that uh, you f I feel best about being in that room every single day. Those guys have worked, they've battled, they've competed, um, and they're ready. So whatever happens, you know, their time is coming. They're ready to step up, uh, and it's just about continuing to enhance and to build. And they've had great guys to learn from. That's the most important thing. Uh, Greg's going to work with safeties, I guess. Is that what does he bring to that role? Well, think? again, it, it's a it's a little bit different perspective. He, he's, you know, obviously very similar in the beliefs of what we've done and what we do. Um, again, we're still young at it. We're still new at it. Everybody brings something a little bit different. Um, the 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 idea is he's a very smart coach. He knows what he's doing. Uh, he studies what we're doing. He's going to continue to study what we're doing. That's why he's here. That's why he's around. Um, and he'll find little ways to enhance what it is that we do. So. Um, it starts with building a relationship with those guys because as coaches we can think we're the smartest people in the world and we've got all the greatest ideas and answers but the reality is the relationship we build with those guys the, our ability to push them motivate them uh, get them to believe in what it is that we do is really the, the the gift of being a great coach I guess that's the thing that intrigues me Luke because you you talk about everyone having a perspective their ideas all that kind of thing and you guys are all innately your defensive coaches your competitive guys uh, how competitive can that get in the coaching room without crossing a line how do you how do you manage to balance that do you, do you know what i'm saying survival of the fittest yeah <laughs> no it's it's again it, it's i know you're not there, swinging at each other or anything but i give and take. don't know how it doesn't get to that point <laughs> if, it if it has to come no um it, it's give and take and like i said there's not one specific way there's not one way of only way of doing it the reality is you're intelligent people just like you you put in a bunch of different guys in that locker room and they all come from different religious ethnic, uh, you know, ra racial backgrounds, uh, and they find a way to all believe in something bigger than themselves. And it's the same way with us as coaches. You know, you put them intelligent, people find a way to be successful and be successful together. Hey, Luke, um, Vaughn was just saying that Malik Hooker is making a lot of game, a lot of uh, strides in practice. You obviously want to win this game, and you have a lot coming or potentially leaving at the end of the year. How do you balance getting those young guys reps and in, in the exodus of talent you guys might have defensively uh, in with winning a game. We'll worry about that in the spring. I mean, again, the, the beginning of your bowl preparation is a lot of younger guys. So we, we do a lot of that. But the reality is we're we're out here right now. We're preparing to, to, to beat Notre Dame. And we're not, I mean, again, we're, we're developing. We're working the young guys as much as, as, much as we possibly can. But um, we know we're going to put our best 11 guys out there on the field. And however we have to do that, we will. What do you remember about playing against Notre Dame? Well, the good thing is, I think I played in 95, 96, 2006, and what I remember is, is being 3-0. and uh -huh. I think that's probably, um, again, through the different times, but the reality is, obviously, it's an incredible matchup. The, the, the storied histories of both of those, the, the, the fan bases, um, it's one that you, that you, reasons why you come here. I know you don't think about this, but I'm going to ask anyway. But it kind of feels like, like that 95 season was sort of, you know, that was part of the 95 season, and that was kind of when the program really became a national program again. Yeah. I, want, I mean, do you, did you kind of feel it that way at that time? Which I don't know that I'd say that now because I wouldn't think that we're not a national program. But, right, but, but they, back I, then, in 95, that yeah. might have been one of the, one of the big uh, hurdles to get over the top, you know, the, the show that you had with, you know, I think, Bobby Hoing throwing four touchdowns and right. Eddie George running for 207 yards. and. You know, two touchdowns, and of course Terry Glenn. I think that was one of those, one of those times when all of a sudden it was uh, the highlights came on and, and probably put us a little bit different place on the map. Keeping this memory genre thing going, a little bit out of left field, but ten years ago Ross Holman coming out of cold water. What was it that attracted you to Ross, and what, what was it that you wanted to get Ross in here and get him in right away? No, I, I think anytime you look, some people think in recruiting you're looking for how, how fast the guy, how big is the guy, what is this. The reality is you're looking for football players. You're looking for guys that fit your culture, believe in what it is that you're doing. And I think that's the biggest thing about what Ross Holm was. I mean, you're not going to sit there and measure him, the height, the weight, and the speed, and all those things and say he's going to be, you know, the five star guy. You know, the reality is he was exactly what we were looking for. 
kind of guy that was a hard-nosed, tough football player. And to be honest with you, I'm not sure he wasn't as talented um, linebacker as I coached. I mean, guy that had the ability to, from day one when he came in here, um, nobody could stay on their feet better than Ross Holm with better balance. Was there much debate about whether it be a linebacker or a fullback? No, because we don't think we played with a ton of fullback. Uh, um, but, uh, you know, you never know. I mean, there's a lot of debate on what Teddy Ginn was going to play, a lot of debate on what Troy Smith was going to play, Anthony Gonzalez. Uh, the list can go on and on. So the reality is you get the right people uh, that fit your program, your culture, uh, and believe in it, what it is that you do, and you'll have great success with them. You being from Columbus, I mean, what is it like to go and recruit those smaller schools, though? I know there's a lot of good players there, but they're still not sending as many. It's still well, it, it's, it's difficult at times because sometimes when they play some of those other competition, people might not think they're – well, they don't play the competition. They're not as good when in reality they play great football. Um, but that's where you got to do your best job as a coach is, is evaluating um, the potential of what someone can have, putting them in a different environment. Is that a little bit different now? There's more, probably more camps. Maybe it's easier. To yeah, it is. It's a little bit different. But I mean, Ross Holman was here as a sophomore in right. football camp too. So your ability to not just get to look at them on film or time them, your ability to actually work with them, talk to them, uh, get to know them a little bit better tells you a lot more of uh, who they are and how successful you believe they can be. How, but is it even is it different? You know, I'm just saying when you're going and visiting, a play, you know, the smaller schools and stuff like that, where the culture is maybe a little bit different than it is like at a you know suburban school or something like that. Not good, bad, or indifferent. I'm just. I don't know how it'd be much different. I think Coldwater's only won four or five of the last right, yeah. six state titles. So there's a lot of great programs out there, and I think that's one of those things that you can't take and judge it solely on that. But the reality is, guys that come from great programs. Guys have, uh, you know, been in those battles and, and know what it's like um, to, to not say to practice or play football year round, but the reality is it's it's on your mind year round. Luke, well, how, how do much you, is how much does is a how important is a bowl in sort of propelling you into the off season, into the start of what's ahead for next year? Does it matter if you yeah. play well or don't play well or win or don't win? Well, yeah, it's just like anything. I mean, it's, it's, you're judged a lot on how you finish. And we talk about to our guys all the time. It's, like it's not about how you play at the beginning of the year. It's how you play at the end of the year as you get better and do all those things. And as you you know, go into your winter conditioning about having a great feeling about what it is that you're doing, I mean, that, that's a big part of it.